part one of a soldier's diary by ralph scott this librivox recording is in the public domain part one april twenty three nineteen eighteen arrived at the royal engineers base depot rouen and was delighted to find a pile of letters waiting for me damn fools that we are we are all fretting to get back into it again the lines must be very thin nowadays in the evening had an excellent mess smoking concert plenty of champagne and a terrific fug in the anteroom heaven knows when we will have another night like this as we are at the last outpost of civilization again april twenty four wasting time all day at the demolition school god what fools we are up in the line men are dying like flies for lack of reinforcements here are thousands of troops and we cannot go because the royal transportation officer staff is too small to cope with the railway embarkation forms april twenty five several fellows posted two companies to-day so that it looks as if we shall soon be over the wall that haig spoke about and with our backs to it again april twenty six more demolitions news still very bad if they don't let us go to the huns methinks they will come to us april twenty seven demolitions again we destroyed a steel rail and heard a fragment of it go humming away over our heads just like a shell about ten minutes afterwards the colonel came down with great wind up and chewed us all to pieces for being careless our piece of rail had evidently gone right over the camp and landed somewhere near the revolver range unfortunately the colonel had heard it humming over his hut and it had nearly frightened him to death april twenty eight church parade april twenty nine learning how to make dugouts as practised by an officer who has never heard a gun go off i wonder if the huns do silly things like this april thirty wasting ammunition all day on the lewis gun ranges may one bayonet fighting so that it looks as if we may eventually go into it again one man down from the line to-day says that he has seen royal engineer field companies holding the front lines with the poor bloody infantry in support oh let us be joyful may two had the day off as i am orderly officer to-morrow went out with lucas and two nurses and crossed the seine by an old-fashioned rope ferry climbed the hills on the far bank and spent a glorious day in the woods scenery magnificent and everything so unlike war in the evening we boarded a river steamer and went downstream four or five miles to rouen had the tea so called took the nurses back to their camp and back to ours by train rouen is a strange mixture gothic beauty and twentieth century filth may three quiet day could hear distant gunfire in the evening presumably at amiens may four lucas and richards went up the line to-day may five church parade wrote a lot of letters and pretended to be happy may six borrowed a horse from the cavalry depot and went for a ride with one of the nurses had a ripping lunch at a little cafe in petit coron omelettes and fresh butter to say nothing of the nurse are much nicer than bully and dry biscuit in the evening played the cavalry at rugger and whacked them eight to six after an abnormally hard game we did enjoy ourselves may seven lazy day sometimes i wonder if there really is a war on these people here don't know about it and in england they must naturally know less may eight very enjoyable ride in the forêt de vouvray with major j had a damn good nag may nine poor old jacques received news of his brother's death in mespot knocked him out badly may ten great joy i am posted at last and to my old company good old war again may eleven at last left rouen in a crowded troop ship and made myself thoroughly miserable by wondering if i should ever come back and what everybody was doing at home etc etc silly ass may twelfth sunday passed through boulon and wimerer early in the morning and then through calais and castle and on to heidelbeck where we slept in the train 
hun planes came over in the night and tried to bomb the train but they didn't get anywhere near us may thirteen set off at nine a m to find the company and after walking eleven miles with my pack found them at one of the old camps in the ypres salient quite like home again the camp is surrounded by guns and a battery of nine point two howitzers just behind us make life unbearable in the evening the divisional concert party gave us a very good show in spite of the fact that the theatre was continually shaken by shell explosions may fourteen went up the line with meller to take over his work on the green support line paid my respects to ypres again it doesn't alter much whilst i was writing a bosch plane came over our camp and brought down two of our parcival balloons in flames all the observers managed to get into their parachutes and landed in the woods about two hundred yards away later on two more bosch came over but one was driven off and the other forced to descend with a broken propeller may fifteen very heavy bombardment last night and early this morning our own batteries replied so we had very little sleep the hens laid five eggs went up to ypres again to make some gas-proof dugouts may sixteen working in the line all day and saw several air fights but no casualties on either side at night went up again and had two hundred poor bloody infantry constructing a barricade on the main ypres paparigny road enemy strafed the nine point two howitzer on the plank road and as we passed his shells were falling about twenty yards away from us we didn't stay to observe his shooting which was a little too good to be comfortable arrived on the job and found that half the working party had gone astray owing to brigade headquarters giving wrong orders damned asses in their well-cut breeches if they had to flounder about in trenches all night they would be more careful the ypres salient on an ordinary lively night is a sight to be remembered the rise and fall of the very lights makes a circle of fire all around us and except just where the paparigny road connects us with the rest of france we appear to be completely surrounded it is more than a marvel to me how they have failed to cut us off in that little bottleneck on this particular night fritz was raining shrapnel into dick bush and our people were giving him a warm time in reply the four point five howitzers were firing hammer and tongs and as i watched the angry shell burst on the ridge in front i began to feel quite sorry for the boche infantry however his field guns sent some high explosive over just to the left of my barricade and my sympathy rapidly vanished cycling back in the grey of the morning we saw a nine point two howitzer being tugged into position by a tractor and a cottage in branhurk just set on fire by a direct hit we did not linger may seventeen working on the barricade again much quieter night but in the direction of kemmel there was a very violent bombardment lasting about twenty minutes probably a raid by the french at midnight went into support battalion dugout for a whiskey and whilst inside the boche got a direct hit on top with a gas shell on way home noted the cottage at brandhook still smouldering after last night may eighteen finished the barricade except for wiring and the barrels of earth for the fairway also completed number two post got strafed by a five point nine on the way up and had wind vertical ten shells all to myself and very close very quiet night except for a few rounds of shrapnel on the barricades may nineteen sunday rode around with the skipper taking over all the demolitions from him as he goes to the gunners to-morrow as liaison officer i am now responsible for the explosive charges under all the bridges behind ypres and in case of evacuation of the salient i've got to be the last man to leave blowing up everything before i go it's a regular suicide club as i know that fully half the charges won't go off unless i fire my revolver into them disadvantages of belonging to a corps with high ideals blow yourself up rather than fail to blow the bridge a nine point two battery fired just as we rode past them frightening blacker's horse and giving him rather a bad fall 
heavy drum fire in the evening in the direction of locre heard later that the french got three hundred prisoners durham's are doing a raid on our right to-morrow night may twenty busy all day on demolitions hot day and very quiet may twenty one flemerton very heavily shelled with h e and shrapnel just as i was going in bosch got another direct hit on the old church tower and brought more masonry down into the road cycling along the switch road behind a lorry when a shell dropped into the swamp about fifteen yards on my right tore some big holes in the lorry cover and splashed me with mud lucky the ground was so soft or else i should have had a little more wind up at night had two hundred and sixty poor bloody infantry working for me on the green line they are the best workers we've had yet and only came out of the line last night one of their officers told us a very amusing yarn of a patrol stunt which he did the other night captured a boche killed four and got away with everything except his tin hat recommended for military cross heavy barrage for durham's raid started at twelve midnight and lasted for three-quarters of an hour Bosch retaliation on our roads and forward areas at five minutes to twelve the moon was shining on a peaceful but desolate scene the frogs were croaking in the shell holes and the only signs of war were an occasional veery light beyond ypres and the lazy droning of a night bomber overhead at midnight there was a crash behind us and instantly our guns let out together surrounding us with a wall of noise and leaping white hot flame the s o s began to rise from the german lines and shortly afterwards the steady crashing of his shrapnel barrage was added to the den this went on steadily for three-quarters of an hour while we grovelled on our stomachs in the mud and punctually at twelve forty five settled down to the usual desultory shelling had only one casualty in my party but he was a nasty sight chewed to pieces by a direct hit on the way back meller and i cycled into some gas and swallowed a bit before we got our bags on coughing and sneezing all night and had devilish headache just out flamerting we ran into a smashed ambulance and four limber mules and two drivers literally splashed about the road our wheels were wet with warm blood later on we found a saddle horse blown in two but could not see any sign of the rider one of the worst nights i have had since march may twenty two quiet night testing my charges on the bridges very hot and water unobtainable tried thirst quenchers which were worse than nothing white with dust and eyes nose and mouth full of it may twenty three another quiet day testing charges dairy twice shelled off his job but had no casualties may twenty four heavy rain last night converted everywhere into a quagmire may twenty five beautiful hot day again completed work on demolitions and finished all preliminary testing may twenty six busy day handing over demolitions jolly glad to be rid of them although it means front-line work instead very heavy shell fire all night followed by bosch attack in which he captured ridge wood and scottish wood had seven casualties and had to ride all the way home in gas mask hear that the durhams have been very badly hit two companies almost entirely gone may twenty seven am posted as reserve officer to our forward company in addition to my own work working under the new major on main reserve defences bosch still shelling very persistently all morning especially round broadhook where he fired a large petrol dump picked up some shrapnel which fell within two or three yards of me putting in a double machine-gun post in the top of a ruined windmill splendid field of fire and view right away to the foot of kemmel hill god help jerry if these gunners stick it also constructed a very strong double post in a farm on the switch road may twenty eight up at five thirty and working hard all day in the green line twice shelled out of the front line and eventually had to withdraw all men to work on support 
i have told brigade headquarters three times that it is madness to work here in daylight and that i cannot accept any responsibility for casualties the german observation balloons can see us all the time and we are shelled continuously however they don't get shelled so it is carry on the work has to be done the mists are the only things that save us as soon as there is a clear day we shall be wiped out may twenty nine had a whole battalion of poor bloody infantry working for me on green line in this blasted exposed position again it makes me feel like a high church curate walking naked down the strand shelled out in front of line about eleven a m so left captain of the infantry in charge of parties and went personally to the general got his authority to do exactly as i liked and not to work in front of the village after the morning mists have cleared some one will be wild at my going direct to the general but i have shown him up and saved at least fifty lives but what are fifty lives to the staff may thirty tried the front line again but fritz knows we are there and shelled us out with low bursting shrapnel nasty stuff after the men had withdrawn i went back to see all clear and was damn nearly hit by a whiz bang it burst in a pile of bricks about six paces away i heard the explosion and on looking up saw a column of bricks and debris just starting on its downward journey again it rattled all over my tin hat but i was otherwise untouched later on some shrapnel whizzed into the parapet at my feet and some more crashed through an old notice board by my head hadn't a single casualty all morning my luck is still miraculous and it seems to extend to the men bosch airplane came over in the afternoon and brought down three of our balloons in flames may thirty one two companies of fusiliers working for me on green line misty morning so i started in front and got on very well for several hours about nine a m a five point nine ploughed into a breastwork that my corporal and i were standing on explaining things to some infantry three men were wounded and the work wrecked although by all the laws of reason we should all be dead probably owed our safety to the fact that the earth was newly placed and the shell penetrated a good distance before exploding after this our wire was hit three times and the men were getting nervous so i withdrew to support where we spent a fairly quiet day very bad news comes up from the south and if the bosch successes continue we expect to be attacked here june one uneventful day except that there are rumors that we are going out of the line for a rest another huge piece of masonry was knocked off lamb church tower last night and buried itself several feet in the pavement i should think it weighs over ten tons june two sunday i think received orders to move out of the line and proceed to army reserve area for a rest great joy and as we are much below strength expect the rest to be as long one the men need it badly, and I suppose the brigade staff must get their hair cut. Company marched wearily through dear old Perengi and spent a quiet night beyond. All officers had feather beds, although we messed in a granary. The whole road from Pop to Wormstadt was lined with temporary shacks and caravans where the refugees from Ypres are living they were a noisy dirty crowd and the music from the estimates was simply appalling however combined with french beer and women it seemed to attract tommy oh ye women of england could you but see your heroes now singing songs of blasphemy and whist with naked oars at home it is sunday and you are enjoying the beauties of a june evening after church i daren't think about it my imagination is too keen june three moved off early in the morning and had a long tiring and dusty march after which we entrained for our final destination we passed through very peaceful looking country and although not interesting it was like paradise after the desolation of the salient from railhead we marched to our final billets and arrived there at eight thirty p m absolutely worn out like a damn fool i carried two of my fellows packs but it makes them love me june four 
spent a very quiet day washing shaving writing letters and generally trying to forget the war in the afternoon i cycled alone to castle hill but it was a misty day so i could not enjoy the view met a pretty little waitress at the estimate on the top where i drank a bottle of filthy wine june five did a little drill etc just to keep the men fit and then went for a short ride it is good to be with our horses again june six weather is very beautiful spent the day in meditating how i would love some books now gunfire is just audible at night june seven appointed lewis gun officer to the company and spent the day lazily apart from giving two lectures june eight we are going to move again although thank heaven it is still westwards at one thirty p m received orders to meet staff captain at brigade headquarters at two fifteen p m and it is twelve miles away what would they do with bloody fools like that in business at home and they make just the same kind of mistakes when lives are at stake set off with twelve men as a billeting party and after a very tiring ride reached the rendezvous at six p m to find the blasted captain not yet arrived i would love to write down the men's remarks when he turned up he told me that our billets were a little farther on at the next village but when i got there i found nothing arranged after three hours hard work a great strain on my french i had everything ready for the arrival of the company monsieur le maire and the farmers were very obliging people and extremely keen to help if anything they were a little too hospitable and as i was in a dickens of a hurry it was rather trying to have to stay and drink beer with seventeen different farmers about ten p m mallor arrived with the main body of cyclists and we went to the mare's to eat a dry bully sandwich the old man watched us very gravely and when we had absorbed the bully i poured a drink of greenish-looking water from my bottle he made an awful face and exclaimed ah chateau de la pompe pas bon he immediately rushed into his kitchen and brought us each a huge glass of sparkling cider and as we drank he roared with laughter at the recollection of his joke on chateau de la pompe after this i went out to find the company and met them on the far side of brigade headquarters about eleven thirty i shall never forget how they came back that night they were marching with our own brigade and long before i met them i could hear the jingling of the transport the rhythm of their steps and occasionally catches of song floating down the valley annie laurie they have left more than half their pals to sleep in ypres to-night they are exhausted limping lousy and white with dust yet thank god the spirit is still there the ranks kept well together and finished though they are i believe they would try to struggle back to-morrow if it were necessary i am a sentimental ass even yet but i could have cried as i stood on the path and watched the poor bloody infantry go by except where the fitful glare from a travelling kitchen threw them into flickering relief it was impossible to see their faces and yet i felt i knew them hard and scarred and ugly brown as their rifle stocks as a real man's face should be and always i wonder if england understands if england will remember how many of the ladies whom these darling blackguards have saved would condescend to trail their dresses through the hells these boys call home i wonder and i doubt there are men in no man's land to-night in travail under a starless sky men who wonder if it be right that you should lie snug in your bed to-night while they suffer alone and die june nine spent a very quiet day settling down and getting used to the beauty of our surroundings we are in a charming little valley between wooded hills with a pebbly trout stream to sing us to sleep at night it is just like Stephen on the elway in northern wales a week here will do us worlds of good june ten sunday was notified that a battalion of middlesex is coming to share our billets with us so i rode over to see the area commandant and had rather a stormy interview with him 
rode over again in the afternoon to try to get some tents out of him and again i was successful although between him and the brigade i made myself generally unpopular it has been some sort of fete day in the village to-day and the sappers had a good time helping the inhabitants to decorate their little village square it was very charming june eleven gave a lecture on the lewis gun this morning what profanity in a charming place like this in the evening went fishing and met an old man casting with fly and wading i ventured on conversation and imagine my surprise when he turned out to be an englishman he was very reticent and i should think has a past End of part one